Hello, Keiko here, and welcome to the chaos. Let's go. No? Oh, I assume they did, but, um... I'm just gonna teleport there. Part two. <laughs> oh, you've done that gonna I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. I see, that's why I haven't done, um, Fontaine, because I do, like, absolutely everything. So... I've done many, many things. Oh, look at all these funky plants! So pretty! The name you see that name is very, very close to you, actually. Oh. I don't even know which name that is, and probably for the best. <laughs> um, is this guy's name Trinidad? I know it's obviously not, but I like that I presume he's her dad, and his name is Trinidad. <laughs> Well, um, it's not. Oh, okay. Interesting. Hey, hey, oh. mm. This is usually where I would ask Charter Peace for help, but Charter Peace has gone to bed, so I'll have to ask them later to do my linguistic research. <laughs> okay. Uh, honey, what were you thinking? Going out by yourself? Don't you know how dangerous it is? It's okay, to overhelp me, and we met some kind strangers who helped us, and... Kind strangers? What made you so sure they were so kind, hmm? I suppose they had kind stranger written on their foreheads! Uh, actually, they did, in big bold letters! Don't talk back to me, the man the king probably still hasn't been solved. King problem still hasn't been solved. What'd I do if I lost you too? No dinner for you tonight. They were good people, dad, dinner or no dinner. Uh, hello again, honey. Ah, it's Miss Pinewood and Miss Keiko. Dad, it's them. They're the ones who helped me, and I promised we'd take care of them if they came to visit. <laughs> that is a disapproving dad face. <laughs> if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh, so you're the kind strangers. Well, I'm your dad. Apparently you helped my daughter today, so if there's anything you need, just ask. As now with the scions, the canopy. I still haven't figured out that skions or skions. Uh, I've got some influence around here. And I trust that you're sensible people who know better than to take advantage of their host's generosity. Uh, we just happened to be passing by, so we lent her a hand. It was nothing. Uh, of course, all we asked is for a million more. Mm, no, it's okay. We're just passing through. Uh, yep, yeah, just helping our neighbor. We're not looking for anything in return. Oh, well, let's hope so. Uh, Dad, please, they're not bad people. They've eaten at the, we've, they've eaten at the same table with Kinich before. Be nice to them. Kinich, uh, wait. I heard that two mysterious travelers from afar showed up at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Are they... you? Yes. Yes, we are. I am one of them. And Paimon's the other. Ah, uh, hmm. I do apologize. A lot's been going on in our tribe lately, and I suppose the pressure must be getting to me. I can't believe I was so rude to you. I feel ashamed. Oh, you're off on the wrong foot. Can we start over? Now we're talking. Seriously, though, don't worry about it. Already forgotten. We're just happy to see Honey got home safe and sound. Now you just arrived, I take it. It would be on my honor to give you a hero's welcome tonight. Kevin has quite an about face. We've heard that kind of thing can lead to spontaneous combustion around these parts. Uh, save the VIP tra treatment. If you need a favor, let's talk. Ah, my dear traveler, you are very perceptive indeed. Go inside now, honey. Dad's got some important business to discuss. Okay, look after Miss Keiko and Miss Paimon. They're very special guests. Uh, well, we'll hear you out, but we can't make any promises. That will be able to keep. That will be able to help. Um, this is a matter of utmost importance. Please allow me to explain. For many years, our tribe has celebrated the turn by night. It's a tradition, traditional ceremony among the Skions? Skions of the canopy in which we remember our ancestor, Bakina, and his companion, Kokomato, the mountain king. Bakina was a hero who bore the ancient name Malipo, and Kokomato was a powerful Yamkasal warrior. Together they fought against the Abyss. They were victorious, but it came at a great cost. Bakina paid with his life. The mountain king survived, but was contaminated by the Abyss, and he remains in hibernation to this day. Normally, young Kazals never live longer than a century. It's possible that he was a power is responsible for his unnaturally long lifespan. Wait, so he's still alive? That's right, the Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. The a power inside him is highly sensitive, and when it's disturbed, he awakens and flies into a blind rage, attacking anything that moves. Besides the ceremony, another important part of Turn Finite each year is cleansing the Abyssal Power inside the Mountain King so he will remain sound asleep. However, abyss related incidents have been on the rise in Nana lately, as I'm sure you're both aware. As a result, it has become increasingly difficult to keep the Mountain King in hibernation. 
Only five months have passed since the last time by night, and he's already showing signs of instability. Has he woken up again? He has. He managed to contain the situation by performing a makeshift ceremony right away, but it was a close call. He could reawaken at any moment. Also, he attacked and wounded my companion, Nana, during the ceremony. She became contaminated by the abyss as a result, and... We heard such a tragedy. We're really sorry for your loss. Uh, yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Anyway, right now we're preparing for an exceptional ten finite ceremony, and we need to find a suitable flame bearer. From what I've heard about your adventures, I believe you'd be perfect for the role. Do you already have a flame bearer in the tribe? Of course, plus he's a Bonafide hero who's inherited the Malipo name. Oh, you mean Kinich? Yes, he is the one, a hero worth his weight in gold, and unfortunately for us, he's all too aware of that. No prize for guessing what he said when I asked him to host the term by night outside of the annual schedule. Exceptional ceremony? I'll have to charge an exceptional price. I swear, no other concept exists in that boy's brain. Uh, at least he's predictable. Fork over the more and he's all yours. Sounds like a professional adventurer to me. Sounds like a professional adventurer to me. I'm not the only one to usually... I'm not the one to usually talk about people behind their backs. But I'm convinced the way I got hit on the head and took a wrong turn the day I chose to give that ancient name to him. Have you ever heard of a hero whose mantra is, what's your asking price? Uh, I don't get myself from that insufferable angel he hangs around with. He thinks he's God's gift to mankind, pompous fool. Yeah, Paimon has to agree with you on that last part. Anyway, the fact is the ceremony can just as easily be done without him as long as we find someone else. And besides, you two seem like much better candidates. So what do you think? Uh, so what you need, what I need to do next, what's in it for me, maybe don't. Why don't I try to talk some sense into Kinish for you? Why don't I try to talk some sense into him? Only a few days left before the ceremony, we can't afford to waste what little time we have on negotiating with him. I much prefer if you would consider taking his place. Alright, guess there's no other choice. Uh, wonderful, I can't thank you enough. Honey was right about you, you have kindness in your hearts. Come with me to the other side of the mountain. I'll bring you up to speed on each step of the ceremony. And experience worries, I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. I love that parts one and two are always so, so quick. And then part three last time was super long. <laughs> oh, meanwhile in a hidden cave. Ooh. Uh, a Jew. Curses, who dares insult the great? Kishol Ajo behind his back. Oh no. Okay, cool. Ajo, bless you. Ah, uh, shut your filthy mouth. Worm of the abyss, your putrid words defile the air we breathe. You make the almighty dragon lord, Kishol Ajo, sick to the stomach. Think he's a member of the abyss order, that's music to my ears. Exactly the kind of reaction you're, we're going for. But on a personal level, I gotta say, it's pretty hurtful. Never have we heard such brazen blustering from someone who was interested in death. Up yours, four eyes, we spit in your face. Okay, well that I am a loss to explain. How do I manage to stay so chirpy and cheerful? I only, can only guess at some kind of powerful magic. Well, I digress, Mr. Kinich. I admit it, uh, you, sir, a legendary hunter. Still, the only reason you caught me is that I was reluctant to run away. You see, I'm very interested in the law of your tribe. Okay. Is that, is that it? Okay. Are you intrigued to know what it is about you guys that prompted a visit from the abyss? extreme sports the other day i narrowly avoided getting hit by a very brave soul who just leaped off a cliff i think you call it bungee jumping anyway i'm very impressed that is what i call embracing the spirit of adventure look i did a painting inspired by the bravery and freedom of the skills of the canopy uh you scum sucking swine i swear if you go bungee jumping it'll be without a rope head first off the tallest cliff with a band of hunters on your tail and no one has to run and a bottomless cesspit waiting for you on the ground you say that but i get the sense that mr kinch isn't trying to take my life right now on top of that, I'm tired of spying on you from afar, so why don't we just negotiate a comfortable operating distance that works for both of us? I've heard that the most important thing in human relationships is to respect each other's boundaries. What do you say, Mr. Kinich? No comment. Or you could just tell me what it is you're really after. What? And then I'll name my price. Ooh. Ooh. Probably shouldn't negotiate with the Abyss, though. That sounds like a bad idea. But Enjo, if that's Enjo... He's a funky dude. <laughs> Maybe he's an exception. Oh, this is not the kid. Oh, she became an NPC. Well, she was always an NPC, but like a, a non talkable one you can't talk to. Uh, uh, yes, that is one very round green thing, and we love it. I love it. It's the best silly little green thing. <laughs> Um, oh, it's off to bed. Good night. Uh, have a good rest of the week, and I will see you next time. It was a wimp. But he turns into a big dragon. Ah, true, true. He does. He does give off those vibes, just a little bit. 
<laughs> okay. Ah, uh, Beavis contamination is back. No surprises there. No doubt ex that explains the Mountain King's recent activity. See those torches over there? Those are sacred flame offshoots that we requested from the city of the sacred flame. They contain the power of the pirate archon. Is he in sacred flame in the turbine fire? Oh, well, same thing. For ceremonial purposes, at least, sending someone from the Night Kingdom to retrieve the legendary turn fire isn't exactly an option. More to the point, though, the Sacred Flame is able to burn away abyssal filth, so that's why we use it in ceremony. Uh, gotcha. So basically, we just need to clean up the filth with the Sacred Flame. As one part of it, yes. The complete ceremony is a bit more complicated than that. First, the Flame Bearer must collect a kindling of the Sacred Flame from the starting point. Then use a grappling hook to fly up into the sky and light each of the Sacred Flame pillars. Then they must go down to the canyon all the way to the cave where the Mountain King slumbers, lighting braziers and the final altar along the way. Most skilled flame bearers can accomplish all this without touching the ground once. As much as I hate to admit it, Kinich is capable of this. Well, he can do all that flying without ever falling to the ground. So can you, Paimon? That's what I was thinking. And well, of course, Paimon it'd be, can. It'd be much harder for you guys. Ah, well, don't worry. It's not a requirement ceremony. You're allowed to touch the ground. The only thing is you're not allowed to do is turn back. The flame bearer must always keep moving forwards. You can't skip a pillar, then come back to it after starting the next one. To do so would be to disrespect our ancestors. So what actually happens if you turn back? Surely the fires don't just go out. Well, if you're not careful, you might get burned. What about today then? Does the same rule apply? Oh no, don't worry, today's just a practice. The order doesn't matter, you just need to get to take the sacred flame, cleanse the filth, and then go light all the braziers. Are you ready? Let's begin. I'll repeat the key points again. Gather the kindling, cleanse the filth, and light all the braziers. I'll wait for you at the end. Okay. Okay. You just have to turn into a... I think I have to be this guy. Obtain the kindling! Alright, use the kindling to complete our mission. Is this further there? Let's burn it away from the sacred flame. Night the Braziers? Oh! Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh! Do I need to get more flame? Do I have flame? I, I am confused. Did I not do this last time? Oh, maybe that one doesn't count. Maybe, ah, oh, maybe this one? Why need to be eating one of those silly berries? Or is that an unrelated... I think it was just unrelated. And that's why I wasn't working. Oh, picked up a chicken. <laughs> oh well, oh well. Let's see. Let's... this. Oh no. Is that one of them? Maybe not. I was gonna ignore those reptiles. I don't think I, I need them. If I don't need them, I'm just gonna eat all of them. Especially with the braziers, let's regroup with Trinidad. Hello! Oh. I'm in combat. Not if I run away! Oh! Okay, also not if I fall off the cliff. I would rather not fall off the cliff. That would be, um, that would be ideal. Anyways, right about you. You can, you have performed, outperformed all of our previous candidates. If there was an ancient name for outstanding flame bearers, I'm sure the whale would consider you for the honor. Well, I could probably get the job done too. Now, uh, yeah, all right. Although it probably take Paimon quite a bit longer. All right, now there's still a few days left. Until the ceremony, I should probably get back so I can inform the chief and the other elders that I have found the flame bearer we need. You mean they still got to sign off on it? 
Some of them are still hoping we can come to an agreement with Kinich, but it's only because they haven't seen you in action. So I'm the one responsible for securing a flamebearer, and my recommendation is you. This is a problem peace of mind, are you sure it's not going to be a problem having Outlanders take on such an important role in your ceremony? The place over there, there was a time long ago before the Age of Akina and the Mountain King, where the sky skins of the canopy called that our home. After a period of upheaval, our ancestors were forced to move away. Now it's become a place where our youths go to develop courage and kindle a spirit of adventure. If we fail to keep the threat posed by the Mountain King at bay, it might not be long before we have to move again and find a new home. To answer your question, I think everyone will agree that you are the right choice. Fair enough, desperate times call for desperate measures. I need to drop my fireplace at some point before the ceremony, if that's alright. There are still a few final details that we need to discuss. Okay, see you later then. You have my gratitude. We've helped out a lot of lo other local festivals before. This one feels a little different. Anyway, let's take a break before heading back to Trinidad's Dad's place. <gasps> Kinich! He's just kind of chilling. <laughs> Where is he going? We just going back. Okay. Uh, we didn't try to level get. Because you can't even go to a pyro. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just failing miserably. I, it turns out it was irrelevant, and that's why it didn't work. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, uh, let's see. Where? Oh, it's Kinich! Okay, go Paimon. Kinich, fancy meeting you here. We've actually been looking for you. Uh, hey there, nice to see you again. Okay, to the point, I heard he accepted a proposal from Aldo Trinidad. Oh, the, uh, term finite, you mean? Uh, you were still his first choice, it's just, oh geez, it's not what it looks like, I promise. Uh, chill is cool, I only mentioned it because it's something you should know, and I suspect Elder Trinidad hasn't been completely forthcoming with you. It's your intention is to resolve the Mountain King problem once and for all. Oh. Once and for all? You mean this will be the last turn finite ever? That's right, he wants to use you to send the Mountain King to the Night Kingdom. Oh. We weren't gonna do that. To the Night Kingdom? You mean... To his death. Now, whoa, whoa, are you serious right now? You shouldn't go around blurting out accusations like that. It can get you in trouble. Too blunt? Okay, I'll phrase it more gently. There is a potentially possibility that Elder Trinidad may be hoping that, during the course of the ceremony, you kill the Mountain King dead. But that's ridiculous! He told us the Mountain King is a living symbol of your tribe's glory. And that glory comes at a price. That's right, the Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. Ah, uh, yes, Anana wasn't the first. Is it because of his companion, Nana? Shinaki won't be the last to lose her life either. So is killing the Mountain King really the only option? It seems so extreme. How does he plan to kill him? The Mountain King is a unique case when it comes to abyssal contamination. It's eaten away at him for so long, it's consumed him entirely and the damage is irreversible. The evil power has both driven him insane and kept him alive over the centuries. Just look at it one way, one is completely purged from his once completely purged from his body, the Mountain King will finally be able to rest in peace. In past ceremonies, we've only purged about half of the abyssal power. This was to strike a balance to keep him alive but also keep him asleep. Trinidad didn't say anything about how much power he wanted us to purge, but he did say there were some more details to go over before the ceremony. And it sounds like you'll know for sure soon enough. If you really asked us to kill the man's king, what should we do? I think we're a little out of our depth here. Is it too late for us to back out? We're a little out of our depth here. I know this must come as quite a shock, so I suggest you act like you didn't hear anything from now. But would you have time to visit to the chief after your meeting with Elder Trinidad? I'd like to make a deal with you. What kind of deal? One well, that comes at a very reasonable price. I'm sure you have plenty of other questions, but we can talk more later. Okay, we'll be there. Uh, good. See you soon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a short man. He is a little bit short, but we love him. We love him anyway. He is. I do find his eyes very interesting. Very, very interesting. But where is he? Oh no, we're going to see this guy. Hello, Trinidad. Ah, mighty Outlanders, you have returned. Did you have a good rest? It was pretty good, yeah. Glad to hear it. Things are progressing very smoothly on my end. Many of the elders have heard of your heroic deeds, including the chief. They will speak very favorably of you. There are still some those who insist the ceremony should be performed by the bearer of the Malapo name. But they're just stuck in the past, we need to move with the times. 
Plus, Keisha doesn't want to do it anyway. Exactly. So now it's time for us to discuss the final details of the ceremony. We covered the fire lighting part of the process yesterday. The next part is the purification of the Mountain King. How does that work? It's quite simple. You just need to use a sacred flame. We've done it plenty of times before and it's always very routine. I'm sure you won't have any problems. One point I'd like to stress though is that you need to burn away as much of the abyssal energy as you can possibly can. The more we dispel, the longer the Mountain King will remain asleep. Asleep, huh? Precisely. In previous years, the flame bearer often has been unable to dispel a sufficient amount of abyssal energy. There's the only reason why we have to perform ceremony on a regular basis. I understand you have a lot of experience fighting against the abyss. You seem to wield the sacred flame quite effortlessly yesterday. With your help, I'm optimistic this time we can dispel all the remaining abyssal energy from the Mountain King's body, freeing us from this ever looming threat for many years to come. There you go. I uh, got it. Anything else we need to know? This doesn't faze you at all. Huh? You clearly have a lot of confidence in yourself. Ha ha ha. That's really all you really need. That's really all you really need to know. Ceremony is in three days. I'll come and fetch you when we're ready. In the meantime, feel free to take a look around our settlement. It would mean a lot to the elders if we got to if you got to know some more of our people. And if you wouldn't mind helping them out with a few errands here and there, that would be even better. So now we have extra errands to run. Maybe we should add a little extra to the price. Ah, just a humble suggestion, that's all. It'll help you gain the respect of our people. And as a mighty hero, I tr believe, truly believe that's what you deserve. I'll be sticking around over the next few days. So if you have any questions, you know where to find me. The kid was right, we should go meet up with him right away. Uh, he's six foot six! I refuse. If he is six foot six, how tall is Jung Lee? <laughs> like, how tall is this guy? How tall is Yao Yao? Ah, uh, uh, you're here. Uh, Kinish Elder Trinidad said that I can tell us written on your faces. Is that Keiko and Paimon? Forgive me for not being there to welcome you on your arrival. That should have been my duty as chief. Uh, hello, Chief Wainer. I only heard the name from Trinidad yesterday, so I asked Kinish to invite you over for a quick chat. Oh, the news, not the name. Uh, it's our pleasure. Uh, I believe Kinish has already filled you in, so I'll get straight to the point. First, I fully endorse your appointment as Flame Bearers for the upcoming turn finite. However, I would like to request that you take steps to ensure the Mountain King's safety. Every child of our tribe grows up hearing the tales of our heroes, from Ivan Chi, the Firebringer, to Bakina and the Mountain King who fought against the Abyss. This is our history and our heritage, the source of our pride and the centre of our faith. To kill the Mountain King would be to destroy our spirit. I would never be able to face our ancestors in the Night Kingdom. Nana's death was a great tragedy and I do not blame Trinidad for the actions he has taken. Nevertheless, I cannot allow any harm to come to the Mountain King. The very roots of our identity are at stake. My honoured guests, please give this matter your serious consideration. Is there no solution to say that will satisfy both sides? Perhaps there is, but despite all our attempts to contain the situation over the years, we have not found it. Right now, I would like to hear what you, where you stand on the matter. I'm inclined to honor your request. I'm inclined to honor my agreement with Trinda. I need to mulls over. Paimon will sneak off to some other tribe tonight. <laughs> Paimon, let's sneak off! I'm running away won't solve anything. You need some time to think this through. That's all. I'm running away won't solve anything. You need some time to think this through. That's all. Don't worry, we'll come up with something if we put our heads together. Now, thank you both. There are still three days after the ceremony. I hope they will bring you clarity. So, Kinch, earlier you were saying that. Let's walk and talk. I'll show you around the tribe. That works too. Paimon needs to get some air after this. Kinich, where are you? Where is he? Is he down here? Oh, there he is. Well, there he should be. Uh, Kinich, Paimon finally understands why you turned Trinidad down. You knew what he was finding, didn't you? That's why you didn't want to be the flame bearer this time, because it's a double edged sword. The whole moral thing was just a sneaky excuse. The village sword is right, by his boss wasn't made an excuse. To solve this exceptional problem, an exceptional, an exceptional price must be paid. Are you saying you have a plan? I'm working on it. Really? Well, come on then, let's hear it. In a moment, didn't you have a question that you were about to ask me? Oh yeah, what was it again? Oh right, we did talk about Ajo. He's completely unhinged. That's the point. Where is he today? I agree, he has a problem. He needs disciplining, so I hired him a teacher. You got him a teacher? Oh, Paimon would love to see him get scolded for bad behaviour. Anyway, moving on, we ran into Ado. He said you two were investigating some abyss thing together. Is that related to the whole Mountain King situation? Uh, yes, it's the angle I've been working on. I'm a Saurian hunter, but I occasionally hunt the abyss too. One time I was pursuing some purple demonic dogs when I accidentally entered a hidden space. I did some research of the fact. Apparently they're known as beastly rifts. 
and there are many of them of all different sizes. That's where those purple dogs were coming from. So, if you can locate one of these beastly rifts, clear the monsters out, and move the mountain king aside, he'd be able to continue living, but without posing a threat to the tribe. That sounds kind of crazy. Would it really work? It's not without its risks, of course. There's a lot of unknowns in the equation. For instance, for all we know, a prolonged period into the rift could call make the mountain king's condition worse. So we just need something like this, even just as a temporary measure. We've seen the conflict the issue is causing, and I've tried for yourselves, and believe me, it's been a long time coming. The chief is adamant about keeping the Mountain King alive, whatever happens. How we can understand is this about the Mountain King and more about preserving your culture and heritage. Yes, on the flip side, you've got people like Elder Trinidad, who is more concerned about protecting the people he cares about now and into the future. And he has every right to take that view. It's only it's one thing to try and preserve the last remnants of our glorious past, but making your kid pay the price for it? No one can seriously tell them that's a fair trade. You're right, there's no easy answer here. Let's leave that one to one side for a moment and see we get, go with your plan. How do you actually intend to find one of these BC rifts? Because at least in our experience, the dogs open the rifts when they want to attack us, not the other way around. I think I know a way. Are you really going to do this? Do you have any better ideas? Not at the moment, but it just feels like using the power of the Abyss for our own end isn't going to end well. After all, the Abyss is what turned the Mountain King into a monster in the first place. People are going to think you've lost your marbles. If it's not well, that's a price you pay. Everything in the world comes at a price, even when uh, you can't cheat, the fire bringers all the time by, it costs him dearly. Now the King's erratic outbursts have brought tensions within the tribe to a boiling point. Unless this gets resolved quickly, everyone will be stuck in a stalemate. Uh, Alright, so what's this deal you wanted to make with us? We hardly know experts on exploring the abyssal power. Exploiting abyssal power? All I need for you to do is keep people away from me. I'm getting harassed on a daily basis by people trying to convince me to be a flame bearer. I can't afford to waste all my energy dealing with them. If you help me out, that'll be a gift for you in return. Ooh, what kind of gift? Something well worth your while, I'd say. Okay, but how do we keep people away? So you're doing what you've been doing. Integrate yourself. Ingratiate. Ingratiate? Ingratiate yourself with the tribes people so everyone comes to terms with the fact that we have a new flame bearer. That way I won't have an endless stream of people coming to beg me to join the ceremony. And I can focus on finding a way to summon the beastly rift. Then when the day of the ceremony comes, we'll move the mountain king into his new home. Still, sounds pretty crazy. Even for a daredevil like you, that's dangerous. And even if it works, what if neither Chief Wayna nor Chief Trinidad are happy with it? Elder Trinidad are happy with it. Have you thought about what you do then? At least the two of them would finally be on the same side of the issue, leaving only me on the opposing side. Trebney's leaders that, like them, far more than a story hunter for hire like me. By the way, it sounds like there's no more in this view. Ha, huh, can I take that to mean that we have a deal? You can give it a try. For sure, and who knows, maybe we'll come up with an even better solution to all of this in the next couple of days. Uh, great, well for the next couple of days, please spend some time among the tribe and lend a hand wherever you can. I'm sure everyone will be sucked off their feet when you meet when they meet our new flame bearer. Good luck to us both. Okay. 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 We can do this. I like our task is just to walk around and be helpful. Great house of the day, meet the tribes people and take some heat off, Kinch is back. Okay. Okay, I think we need to talk to, we need to, talk to the kids, where are the kids? Honey, how dare, how can you call the mountain king a monster? Because he hurt a lot of people, and he, look what happened to Nana. But it wasn't on purpose, the Mountain King is sick, that's all, he's been hurt by the Abyss. That's true, but the fact remains he's now a threat to all of us. How can you be so harsh to someone who's sick? If you don't take back what you just said, I don't care. I don't know if we can carry on being friends. Ah, uh, Toba, honey, what's wrong? Honey's saying nasty things about the Mountain King. It's not right, he's our hero. <laughs> Once upon a time, maybe, but not anymore. Uh, hey, now it's not a fight, aren't you best friends? <laughs> Yesterday, maybe, but not anymore. Ah, uh, Toa, fine, I guess my dad is right. Things change, you just have to accept it and move forwards. As of today, our friendship is over, there's no going back. Oh, come on, cut it out, you two. We have some great news to tell you. Keiko is going to be the flame bearer for the next turn by night. She's going to do a beautiful ceremony and cure the Mountain King's illness for good. Uh, what, really? Of course, I'm an expert at this stuff. That's what my dad wants to talk to you about. 
To be fair, from what we saw the other day, you are pretty good at climbing cliffs. Probably just as good as Kinich. Oh, wait, speaking of Kinich, where even is that guy? Oh yeah, good question. Is he not coming to the ceremony anymore? We can get him to come, but if he catches you two fighting again, he won't be happy. He'll be sure to give you both a piece of his mind. Ah, uh, no, we can't let that happen. I've never even spoken to him before. I can't afford to make such a bad first impression. I didn't mean to argue with T Toba. All I said was the Mountain King has done some pretty bad things. He was the one who turned into a fight. You two clearly care about each other. The Mountain King can't change that. Uh, yeah, if you weren't friends, there's no way Toba would come to look for the baby Saurians with you. Alright, well, because of Keiko and Paimon and Kinich, I am sorry, Toba. I am sorry for all the mean things I've said about the Mountain King. Dad just really misses Nana, and I was really upset that she's gone too. Ah, uh, oh, ah. Uh, I shouldn't have spoken to you the way I did either. It wasn't very nice of me. For Keiko and Paimon, Kinich, and for Nana, I'm sorry too, honey. That's more like it. Now you're best friends again. Ah, uh, I guess so. Toba, if you ever say anything mean about the Mountain King in the future, I'll make sure I say it to someone else and not you. I better go buy some coloured cloth for my dad now. He needs it for the term fire night. Let's play again some time in the future. I just made up that sentence. Let's go play some other time. Uh, see you, Toba. See you, Keiko and Paimon. Uh, okay, I'll head home as well then. See you next time. Uh, okay, take care, you two. Ah, oh, even though... I said sorry, it looks like their friendship isn't as strong as it was before. Times really are changing. Ah, I said we can solve this once and for all. Ah, uh, come on, let's move on. Yeah, this is a bit of a dialogue heavy t quest. And I assume it will stay a dialogue heavy quest. Uh oh, that was going on over there, let's take a look. Um, because we're like helping people. Ooh, what is this? Ah, uh, hey there, what's happening here? Ah, uh, a rehearsal for the turn finite dance. There's a dance involved. Paimon wants to learn too. You don't know it? Ah, I guess you're not from these parts, huh? It's rare to see a new face around the tribes these days. I thought everyone would be keeping away. Huh? Why do you say that? Because the term finite, of course. The Mountain King could wake up at any time. That's why we're holding an emergency ceremony. This is one of those fun and games festivals. For outsiders, it might even be a little dangerous. Well, did you know the flame bird this time is actually going to be an outsider? Oh, I did hear about that. It's a first for sure. I would love to meet them in person. Ah, now you have. Uh, what? Oh, it's you! Man, oh man, well, this is a nice surprise. It's funny, I was just thinking they'll probably miss out on meeting the new flame bearer since I'm not taking part this time around. Then suddenly, there you are. Must have been a lucky day. Haha. -ha. Not taking part in Time Finite. How come? You're not an outsider, too, are you? Nah, you must be joking. Watch this. Oh, is this him showing us the dance? Not bad, right? Yeah, I'm considered one of the better looking guys into da who dances beneath the pillars of the sacred flame. Been doing it a few years, always gets the ladies out to watch. Haha. -ha. Oh, very impressive. So why'd you quit? Well, I feel like the whole Mountain King situation is getting more and more precarious. It's just not safe here anymore. One of our elders, Soaring companions, even lost her life not long ago. The question is, what are we going to do about this in the long term? But well, I don't have any answers for that. They're probably too busy fighting about it amongst themselves. The way things are going, it's only a matter of time before it gets violent. So I figured, you know what? Not as good a time as any. Now is as good a time as any to get away for a little while. Go do some exploring. You look a little disappointed. Disappointed? Nah, it's a good opportunity to go see the world. As every male skewer on the canopy knows, whenever, wherever you are and wherever you go, the only way is forward. So we take pride in that, and I won't forget my roots. Fair enough. So what's your plan for the next step? I managed to get in touch with the Saurian Relics Association. They gave me a simple test: find a decent quality relic, and they'll make me a member. What's the Saurian Relics Association? You never heard of it? It's a group of amateur history enthusiasts who do research on the ancient Saurian era. They're all about collecting relics and remnants from that age. Thinking which, the guy who was flame bearer for you, I've heard that his Saurian buddy comes from that tribe. Angel? Angel's a relic from an ancient Saurian civilization? Oh yeah, him! So you know those two already, huh? Then do you know how they met? He was deep inside some mysterious ruin, and they signed a contract there. The association folk say that that kind of contract usually comes with a huge hidden cost. Really? That sounds ominous. Who knows, but if it's true, the Kinich can probably handle it. He knows what he's doing when, with weighing up contracts and costs and stuff. I doubt he'd make a contract that doesn't benefit him. Strangely enough, I actually happened upon a strange mural a while back and it looked like he was depicting a Saurian and a human involved in some kind of Saurian era contract ritual. Does that count as a relic then? You bet it does. I was already going to go take a picture of it and use it as my entry ticket to the association. But after all the abyssal activity recently, I heard the area's been overrun by monsters. 
That's my plans, huh? I'll just have to wait and see if things improve. Or you look like you know your way around a fight. I don't suppose any chance you'd be able to help. If we can use to get a picture, that should be pretty achievable, right? Kiko deals with monsters all the time. It's a piece of cake. Wait, you're seriously going to help me out? Come on, it's no big deal. Compared to some of the stuff we've been roped into before, this is nothing. Hierarch and above, you two have hearts of gold, you know that. You're the kind of people who could drive in to dive into the term fight, deep in the bowels of the Night Kingdom, and it wouldn't burn a single hair off your head. I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, of course it is. All right, come with me. I'll show you the way. Okay. Where are we going? All the way over here! Okay, okay. Let's go uh, clear out this... This tunnel or something. For, for this guy. He is quite nice. I do like that we just kind of like left though. Uh, there it is, it's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. Alright then, stay back and take cover. The go, it's gonna get dangerous. We'll take care of them. Great minds think alike, huh? I'm not about to crap your style. Okay. I get really... I like how I said that and then immediately got hit with corruption. That's probably not good. Is it corruption or corrosion? I don't know, but whatever the Rift Wolf thing is, it's really inconvenient. But it's not so bad when your entire team is basically healers. I say the entire team. Two out of four, but that's a pretty high percentage. Pretty high. Almost, almost done, but no, not quite. I see you. Uh, if you think that should be the last of them, it's a good thing. Thiago had the sense to stay in his hiding place. All things could have gotten really hairy for him. Now, hey, look, that's gotta be it, right? Daffy looks like a mural. It's a little on the small side. Uh, true. Now you mentioned it, it most each of you murals take up a whole huge wall. This looks more like something someone with a paintbrush got worn and stuff doodling. It doesn't match the story he told us though. There's a story in a human. So is that supposed to be what an ancient contract ritual looks like? Uh, whatever, we're not here to decipher it, just photo photograph it. Oh, I need to get an actual camera. Uh, okay, where's my where's my camera? Camera? That's the wrong section. This is the right section. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, well that's nice. Uh, okay, let's see. Camera. Camera. Oh. Ah, uh, you didn't actually need to take a photo. I was betrayed. That's a wrap, let's take it back to Thiago. Uh, the Rift Hounds, I hate the Rift Hounds, they are very annoying. It is true, they are the worst. Ooh. You've been robbed? Oh, Poncha, and I thought my luck was bad. I put blood, sweat, and tears into that, and now I've got nothing to show for it. Some gap tooth goon stole it from me. Uh, Thiago, is this the picture you were looking for? We take a look. Yep, that's the one. Pyrak and above. You two are superhumans. Hey, Poncho, come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers, and they're tough as nails. Wait, are you the Keiko and Paimon? Huh? You already know each other? 
don't think so. My nephew Toby's been telling everyone about you. He's your crazy strong, super friendly, and he helped him out. And now you're going to be the off flavor is this turn fire night. Oh, it's your Toby's uncle. Oh, great to meet you, sir. Sounds like we managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. Hee <laughs> hee. Hey, was that wrong, my friend? These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Everyone sees incredibly highly of them. Seriously, if you're gonna, if you're comfortable telling them about what happened, I guarantee you they'll sort it in no time. But really? All I wanted to get the fruits of my labor back. Allow me to explain. Ponch is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, The Party's Turnfire. Unfortunately, the book was stolen by a treasure hoarder a few hours ago. I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last ruin, interviewed every descendant of every hero in our city. On the word Malapur alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. And now it's all gone. The little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all my belongings, including my entire manuscript. The book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him, lost and listless. He's a shell of the man he was. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old student. If only for Toba and Thiago's sake, please help me, I beg of you. Where were you ambushed? See what I mean, Ponch? Now you've run to these two, your luck's about to change big time. I don't know if he's still out there, but come on, I'll take you. Okay. Okay. Where are we going? There, this way, this way. Oh, down a hole. Okay, that was too far down the hole. <laughs> oh, there should be an Oculus somewhere. Uh, hey, you, you thieving rat, give me my things back. What do you want now, you old bum? Guardian your racist face, prepared to get shouted butt first into a tree hollow. Oh, butt first into a tree hollow. I dare you to try. Ah, uh, what's this? Brought a little bodyguard with you? Huh, alright, let's see what you've got. Watch this. Eat dirt, suckers. No! No! Is the shovel guy equivalent? Catch up to eight hands, Matthias. Uh, hey, he's trying to get away. Uh, yes, good. Chase him down. I want to know where this Oculus is. Though. There should be one, like, right? Oh, it's down there. Uh-huh. Okay, let me see if I can get back up there. Maybe I should just teleport back. I don't know where I am. I should stop jumping off of things to get other things because, um, I keep getting lost. <laughs> like, very, very lost. But that's okay. That's okay. We can make it. I see we were supposed to like chase him, but uh, he got way ahead of us. <laughs> we're not even close. Where did these young souls come from? Get away from me, you monsters. Now, uh, both the baby stories are blocking his path. Stop, please, my old warriors. Here's good gods and kings. I can't run any longer. Please don't have your stuff anymore. Have mercy. Oh, yeah, well, where is it then? I threw it away. You threw it away? The old bum's bag didn't have a single more in it. Just had your book, worn out pens, and some old rags. At the time, lying awake was not for nothing. I was so mad, I just threw all of it away. <laughs> is that really the truth? Okay, then, where did you throw it away? Simbase, you found me, I swear, on the Pyrocon, it's the truth. May all my bodily possessions be turned to ash by turn five if I'm lying. Okay, it's a pretty strong oath. What did you do now? It sounds like he's saying the truth. Uh, let's go back to where we were and see if we can find anything. Uh, right, let's hope nobody gets the book before we do. We'll never get it back then. You want in a hidden cave? Although the turn five is a heroic symbol, in Hoitzla, it also comes to the more ominous implications of eventual tragedy. This holds true for all bearers of the same name in recorded history. Each one of them died in non-natural causes, as is if the spectre of the term fire was always lurking in the background. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. None can escape this payment, unless perhaps they could honestly swear by term fire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. 
Uh, you found G's Tampire? What an incredible work of ancient name philo philology. I can't believe it was just lying there for me to take. Let me see who the author is. Uh, Punch, nice, a gentleman and a scholar. A uh, science book muncher, the great cool. Adorable, will suffer your any voice no longer. Do you truly find no joy all at all in pursuing such rich historical records? Joy? What kind of joy is there in pointless drivel? Uh, what if it's a pretty shocking prediction? Every bear out the ancient name, Malapo eventually means a grisly end. Maybe that's the price you pay for the name that means price. Uh, what? You're saying kids will die a violent death? Mwahaha! So I'll finally get to take over his body? Uh, when? When will that glorious day arrive? The great Kujo. Kuholejo demands to know. Why are you really. You are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. You make us of this order folk look like saints in comparison. A silence maggot. Presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Kuholejo is sheer vanity. And if the day ever comes, your doom will soon follow. Uh, you don't need to me about Doomsday. Here's what I know based on countless historical texts. All civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms to heavenly thrones to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. But from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will settle anew and never settle, thus transforming the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization's present. Uh, and you, great Ajo Kuhuajo, are one of such specks of dust from bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance to observe you up close. Now let me take a good look at you. We'll see whether any memories of the age still remain inside you. Well, that's suspicious. I don't know you like that, but that's lost. <laughs> oh, that's fair. I get very, very lost. I will also have some water. All is good. Uh, we're so sorry, Mr. Punch, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean all my hard work was for nothing? You gotta say positive, Punch. You might have lost the book, but the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main points, at least. The reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the term by night is because I hoped it might help us find a way through these trying times, but now... You mean you solved the Manzaki problem? Well, not exactly, but I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh really? What did you find out in your research? I think the key to all of this lies in the power of Malipa. Pontry, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. Symbolic power doesn't count. You're right, but Malipa may be a special case, given that it first arose in the era of the first Pirate Archon. It might contain remnants of Sublank's power. Yeah, I remember that story my grandpa told it to me when I was a little kid. Maybe you're the special case, and most kids stop believing that stuff by your age. I'm not talking about childhood superstitions here. There's, there is evidence. Like what? And the fact that the King is still alive. Everyone attributes that to the power of the abyss, but there's more to it than that. The key factor is that Burkina summoned the power of Malipo at the cost of his own life. If you don't believe me, the answer, then answer me this. How many other creatures can you think of who lived longer, not shorter, after being contaminated by the abyss? Uh, I can't go to different situations, but similar idea. Doesn't that remind you of the Hillet? Shh. I came to the conclusion that Malapu must refer to some mysterious ritual involving a tip for tat exchange. It began with the first Pyrarchon, fell with the Grand Alliance, then was buried in the Night Kingdom, and now it awaits the call of his new bearer. Uh, sorry to drop punch, but you seem to be getting a little overexcited. I'm sorry, I was really planning on presenting my finds to Kinich. I'd hoped he would be attending the upcoming ceremony. Does it mean like you dreamed up one fanciful theory to support another? Huh? Kinich, what are you doing here? I'm more or less finished what I was doing, so I came to have a quick catch up now. Now a good time? Uh, Kinich, I'm onto something. I haven't worked out all the details, but but you have to attend the term by night. Oh, Mr. Ponch here has done a lot of re- Oh, ah, so Mr. Ponch here has done a lot of research on the history of the term fight and thinks he might have found a way for you to solve the problem. I'll be there, Ponch. Let's go. Okay. Okay, where are we going? Kinich, where are we? Where are we hiding? Kinich, oh, we're over here again. Uh, here will do. Have you found a way to summon a BC Rift? Uh, yeah, I'd like your help giving it a trial run tomorrow. If that works, we have a plan come turn by night. Looks like you're not considering Ponja's idea. You heard him. He hasn't worked out the details yet. We need a more practical solution with concrete tests to follow. Yet, are you saying you think you might actually be onto something? I think it's possible based on something I know about the wave the war 500 years ago. Oh! Vakina didn't fall to the abyss, he was killed by the Manza King in an episode of madness. In his final moments, Vakina made the fateful decision to not fight back, and instead passed his blood and power onto the Mountain King. 
Maybe he thought the man's king was stronger than him and more von valuable to the tribe. Or maybe it was just out of loyalty to his friend. Either way, I believe the term fire was involved. When, uh, whether you think his sacrifice triggered it or his fate was sealed from the moment he took the man of your name, it makes sense to me. How you drop these truth bombs with such a straight face? This is what I've gleaned from my many interactions with the man and the king. His mind is so disordered, it took some time to piece it all together. The story Elder Trinidad told you was the more palatable version of events. The truth is even darker. Nanzaki's mind isn't just disordered. He is suffering and feels great shame. I believe he wants to be put out of his misery. Uh, what then? Then what should we do? Should we grant him his wish? Of course not. We should help him move to a new home. So your goal hasn't changed? It's the only practical solution. Man the King is a hero to my tribe, an object of worship even. Ending his life now would be a desecrating a statue. Still, he's been the cause of multiple disasters and we can't afford to have any more. Ugh, practical solutions have Hammer's brain. Can we follow our heart next time? Ah, let's break for the day. I already found a suitable venue for tomorrow. Okay, I guess we will just wait for the next day. Like so. Nope, that's not enough. There we go. I wonder what's gonna happen. I don't think we should kill the Mountain King, but... But I don't know. It is a boss. <laughs> it is a boss. But you think Keiko would be mad to do something because of all of her purifying powers, etc., etc. Uh, you're here, very punctual. Uh, ho ho, so the gross and Tucson come calling back. Here to make amends after the gross irreverence you displayed last time? Very well, the almighty dragon lord, Kulajor, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Now pack her up and kiss our feet! Can you say you found him a teacher? He's just as out of control as ever. Who will guess to discipline the almighty dragon lord, Kulajor? No one! How do you put up with this behaviour? Maybe because I've never had a gentle natured companion like Paimon to compare against. Is that, is that a compliment? Uh, yeah, I see what I'm missing out on now, and it's a lot. Uh, can you each we could drown the measly flying ant in one droplet of spit? How dare you compare to the mighty dragon or to age or? Don't something possess your dead body, I will commit heinous atrocities. Turn out your legacy, destroy your reputation, wreak havoc on your... Hey, go, Pyman, let's get down to business. Once you've, we've opened the BC Rift, you're welcome to toss Ajor in there for a couple of days. With pleasure, you don't need to ask twice. I got my hands on this device in a trade. It's meant as fate, but it also stabilized the abyssal energy. Your hands will tear through space to get to this. Once they're here, we can take them out and clean the rift for ourselves. How did you get your hands on this? If I nasty enough, first let's, give, let's try this out. <gasps> Is it from Enjo? The base from Enjo. Uh, the hate pieces, give it half a chance, so be careful. Ooh! <gasps> Tough! Okay, okay, let's try this again. <laughs> uh, there was something about burning, wasn't there? Well, luckily for us, Klee's here with all of her fire. Oh. Uh oh, there are even bigger ones on the way. Oh, are there even bigger ones on the way? Oh, is that Enjo? You see, Kinich, I'm out of my word. In fact, I'd say I under promise and over delivered. Nifty little gizmo, isn't it? I think it's your true form. Now our deal is complete, it's time to start the next phase of our relationship. I made a promise to the great Gojo, and now I'm here to seize your body for his use. Uh, of course. Cliche, I know, the hero trusted partner sells him out to the abyss in a shocking extra betrayal. Cue bad guy sweet and drawn out death like sequence. Huh? Enjo? <gasps> he was in fact Enjo! Ha uh ha! -huh. What are you two doing here? Oh, Mr. Cage, this is not what we agreed on. Keiko, okay, this is the gift I got you. I know you're looking for intel on the Abyss Order, so I thought this might he might be of use to you. <laughs> this man played all sides. Wow, he's good. Uh, but it looks like you've already met. 
Uh, yeah, we've met. I've beaten him up before. Uh, yikes, frosty reception. Gotta say, I kind of picture this moment going a little differently. Tears of joy welling up in your eyes as you say the words, it's good to see you again, old friend. Don't be ridiculous. Sounds like you've been re reading too many romance novels. There we have it. Change is inevitable and nothing lasts forever. What a pity. Well then, time for you to meet you. the new meet. This time, please call me Sanka. Sanka? Ah, so you're glasses guy. You should tune in Toba into telling you a bunch of stories. What's your role name? What does it matter? A name is a superficial label. It's what deep down inside the counts. And I've lost... And I've shown you the deepest parts of me. You mean the masochistic parts? Uh, that would explain a lot. Why else would you go? Would you show up here and start acting like a wise guy? You looking for a fight? Eh, I'll pass. I do rather like you, as I said before, but my one quibble is that you really, really don't you really don't know your own strengths. Then what are you doing here? Uh wait, of course, you're the one behind all the recent abyss activity. The Paimon guess, you've been provoking the mountain king too. Have I told you before, I'm not part of the inner circle who do our highness's bidding. Uh, my interests are far more low stakes. I spend my time digging the truth in ancient doodads and books. Do you think a bench woman like me is capable of more than that? Uh, I investigated him. He's not connected to the recent events, just happens to be in the area. I'm not sure I could deal with him. He's helped me summon a rift. I allow him to do some historical research. It's all over now. Kinich wants to hand me over to you. While I was hoping this would be an opportune moment to escape away the body. Now uh, that would have given me some more time to study the great Kuhol Aja. But now I've run into you, which is just my luck. Or maybe I've incited the wrath of the term fire. And it's the price I have to pay, but I don't understand what did I do wrong. You tricked Huni and Toba! Uh, wait, does that count? Hmm, let me think. They don't the worst of the worst, including with the Abyss Order against Kinich. How can you betray your partner? There is no betrayal. The Almighty Dragon Lord, Kido Ajo, is a partner to no one. Don't worry, I told him to act as bait. Uh, yes, I should have picked a bigger fish. The Abyss Order, what a joke, not even a matchup for our lonely servant. I put up with this toad croaking for days and it was all for nothing. It's like your disciplinary measures have been less than effective, Mr. Enjo. Eh, what did you expect? Behavioural rehab isn't really our thing. Otherwise, you might as well change your name from the Abyss Order to the Abyss Boarding School. <laughs> uh, the Abysmal Disorder would suit you better, Kinich. Dispose of him. He is one. Oh, he is of no further use to us. Here you go. You gotta make me do it? No, I guess the Abyss Order is a threat to us all. Let him go, he'll never amount to much leave us all anyway. You're my guest. Uh, hey now, I may be a lonely clerk, but don't underestimate me. I can never beat you in a trade fight, but when it comes to running away, I won't lose to anyone. Do me a favor and remember how fast I disappear. Maybe then you'll show me a little respect next time. Ah uh, darn, he got away again. Couldn't you have stopped him? It's alright, he's not worth our time and energy. Besides, it seems like he has, he's in debt to a lot of people. I'm sure they'll keep him busy. Well, if you say so, still have a kind of surprise that you actually struck a deal with someone from the Abyss Order. To borrow that guy's words, names are superficial labels. Whatever you call the abyssal or anything else, it's a broad generalization at best. Think of it like apples that have fallen from a tree. If you taste each one, you'd find that they're all at different stages of ripening. Even the unripe fruit uh, blown off its branch before it's fully grown can still be brewed into fine wine. Everything has its use. Or in that specific sense, maybe Enjo's not such a bad apple. Not rotten to the core, at least. Of course, only the almighty dragon lord, Kiro Ajo, is rotten to the core. And evil beyond redemption. Ah, uh, so exactly you anyway. You're definitely the evilest little thing Paimon's ever met. Don't worry, he can't hurt a fly. Because you signed a contract? You could say that. I haven't heard those kinds of contracts might come with a terrible cost attached. Is that true? That is Ajor watching me like a ravenous vulture? Vulture! Vulture! We are the Dragon Supreme, sovereign rulers of the Nation of Flame. Let's see this up another time. It's getting kind of late. You should go back and get some rest. It's big day ahead tomorrow. Tomorrow's turn fire night. Hands out the sacred flames and burn away the filth of a legendary 500 year old warrior. But yeah, hearing you say it out like that is making Pyro a little nervous. For all the work we put into it, it all comes down to tomorrow night. We have to make sure we solve this problem once and for all. Then you can't hide to say this one more time. Good luck to you us both. Good luck to us both. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see me play live, then check out my Twitch channel. You can find me on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8pm GMT. Thanks again and have a great day!